Hi, I'm Christy Everton Johnson. I want to welcome you to more. I'm excited because we're going to dive into Philippians together. If you watched our last broadcast, we've started a series on learning how to study the Bible. And I've already kind of given some disclaimers about not being a theologian. I'm just a girl that loves Jesus, a girl who, I guess I'm a woman now, I'm over 50. <laughs> So I'm a woman who just wants to share the good news of Jesus and the things that I learned. Do I know it all? No. But I come to the Lord daily, try to daily, and ask him to share um, revelation with me as I read the Word of God. And you know, the Bible is so right when it says that the Word of God is alive and it's active and it has the ability to transform your life and your mind. And the more you know the Word, the more you understand the Word of God, the more free you will become. The more you will understand who you are not who the world's told you you are, but who God says you are. And you'll understand who he, he is, not who you thought he was, not how he's been presented to you, maybe even by Christians, but he will be presented according to truth. I mentioned last time that one of my biggest burdens is to make sure that people understand once they come to the Lord, that there is a responsibility to then dive in to the Word of God to get to know Him, to develop an intimate relationship with Him. This isn't something that we have to do. We talked about last time. It is something that we get to do. It's a way that we can understand and hear from the heart of God, that we can be encouraged. Just recently, I was reading um, a journal entry by a dear friend of mine and she just talked about how she was going through a horribly time of loneliness, a horribly time of loneliness, that really makes a lot of sense, a horrible time of loneliness that she got to a place so low, especially because of COVID, being isolated, not being able to go to work, being cut off from family, friends, from the church, the, the anxiety of if she was gonna lose her job, all these things, and she realized as she was crying out to the Lord for help, he, he showed her, and at the time, I don't know that she even knew that this was God's voice, his Holy Spirit speaking to her, but she came to realize the help she's always needed has been right here. And she had been in church for decades, and she had never taken the time to study the Word, just like me. I was in the church for a decade, decades, but I never took the time, even though I didn't question the existence of God. I didn't question Jesus' sacrifice of his life. I didn't question that he was the way, the truth, and the life, and that if I wanted to come to the Father, that I would have to do that through faith and a relationship with his son. That I had, I had no doubt, but I didn't have an intimate relationship with him because one big part of that was because, one, it wasn't important to me. Two, I don't know that I really understood that there was this thing called an intimate relationship with God. But three, I didn't understand the importance of reading God's Word. And because of that, because I didn't see the Bible for what it truly was, that it was my key to more. It was my key to the abundant life. It was my key to victory. And as an athlete, one that I like to win, <laughs> if we want to win in life, if we really want to be a champion, the key to victory is right here. The key to knowing who God is and his heart for you and the, the authority that you have and who you really are and the life that you can have, it's in here. But we have to take the time to dive in. So many people who come to our ministry, Victorious Living, and they write to us, they say, how do I grow in my faith? And one of the biggest ways, obviously prayer, we can talk about that sometime together, but this time I wanna focus on many series. We're gonna dive into Philippians and we're gonna study the word together because this is, the Bible says that Jesus is the word. He became flesh and dwelt among us, the word of God. To know Jesus, you have to know the word. 
And so think about that as you come to it, you get the opportunity to understand a little more about God and it's exciting. And so let's just dive in. I chose the book of Philippians for us to be able to have a starting point to come together. My goal is for us not to just walk away understanding everything there is about, about Philippians, because let me tell you, I don't know everything there is about Philippians. And if I keep studying it, the reality is I'll know more tomorrow than I know today. But I just thought it'd be fun for us to take a segment in, in however many sessions this takes, uh, we, we both got the time to, to do that, to, to watch these. I think it's important. But my goal is for you to, um, this is how it works for me. But my goal is for you to pick the word up and find a method, find a way, find the time, find the place that works for you. And so you may not study the word just like I did, but there are some keys that I think that you can pull from what I'm gonna say. And as we read through Philippians, I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is gonna speak to your heart too. So you might be, have been walking with the Lord for many years, and as we read things, new things are gonna pop in your spirit. You may have some questions, maybe you're new to this, and you may have questions, that's okay. When you come to study the Word and you open it up, understand that God does not understand, does not expect you to understand everything. All he says is to come to me and I will show you things that you know us not. For some reason, my phone is ringing and I gotta figure out a way to turn it off. It's my husband, isn't that special? It is special, but um, hey, let's just take it, hang on. Hey, Tammy, I'm doing a more Monday. Leftover ribs are in the fridge, in a Tupperware. Okay, bye-bye. All right, maybe Skip will cut that out. Skip does our editing. Maybe he won't. <laughs> so we'll see. But I was too deep in this to start over. You know, I never understand how I can have these set on silent, how I can have them say, do not disturb, and yet they come in. If this is your first time joining us, you will know that these are never perfect, but this is me just wanting to encourage you, to encourage your heart, to equip your mind, and to empower your life. And if you want your mind equipped, if you want your life empowered, if you want your heart encouraged, this is where we find it. So going back to what I was saying before Timmy called, Timmy's my awesome husband. But, uh, yes, Timmy, um, let's just keep going. <laughs> Before he called, we were talking about it's okay to have questions. It's okay to have, um, I keep a journal next to me, and I just write and I write and I write. I write questions. I write responses to what I'm reading. I might stop and dive deeper on one word. I always say, God, how can this apply to my life? Lord, is there um, some place that I'm not being obedient to this? And I just have conversation around what I read. And you can do that at whatever level you are. So it's okay to have questions. It's okay to go slow. It's better to go slow and to think and to meditate and to chew on it like we talked about at the end of last time's session that we come together and we chew on it like a cow chews his cud. We take it in, we let it digest it a little bit, we come back to it, we chew on it some more. This is not a race. God doesn't say you must read the Bible through this many times in a year. I don't know that it even says that you have to read it through in your lifetime. It would be better for you to not have a checklist, this is just Christy, maybe people would disagree. But I believe you could sit down and read this every single day and not get one thing from it. If your heart is not hungry to learn, if your heart is not bent on receiving the truth and applying it to your life. The Bible, God is so clear that he wants us to walk in it. 
He wants us to live in it. He wants us to use the word of God to transform our mind, the way that we think. And when we do that, we won't conform to the world any longer. We will experience the good plans that God has for us. But it comes from understanding the word. And so go slow enough at your pace. That doesn't mean sit back and try to stay comfortable. I want you to push yourself. We have this saying, I remember I was a professional water skier and we had this saying, victory only comes when you get off the dock. I would have never been a world champion athlete had I stayed on the dock. I had to risk getting out there, risk trying something new, risk doing something I'd never done before. Like let's say I'm trick skiing and I knew that I was gonna be trying this new, I remember trying the flips. Oh my goodness, I was scared to death trying 360s, 720s, 540s, and I knew I was going to eat it. But I could never learn the trick if I didn't step off the dock and try it. And it went a lot better if I would had some coaching and some help and I'd watch some people. And so we talked about that last time. Get in small groups. Surround yourself with people who have a hunger for God's word and who will be diving in with you and pouring it in. But don't use them as a crutch. And don't come up with excuses. Oh, I can't read. There are Bibles that read, audio Bibles that read to you. You can listen to the Word of God. Oh, this is my excuse. I don't understand what I read sometimes. Well, you know what I have to do? I have to stop and I have to write down. Like if I'm reading a chapter, I have to write that chapter out almost. Not word for word, but I have to write it out. Thank you, God, that your Word says this and I write it. Because the minute that I write it, and I'm, then I rewrite it in a way that I can understand what it's saying, not the way that I want it to say, but just, just you know, making it a little more personable. Maybe putting my, my name in there where it says, oh, beloved. I say, oh, Christy. It's like God's talking to me. I make it personal. I break it down. I, I just take my time. That's what I'm trying to say. Take your time. Write it down. And it's so cool. Like... A month from now, a year from now, 10 years from now, you'll look back at what you wrote and you're like, man, I was struggling to even understand what that was. Now look where I am. I was like, so I had that question, but look, the Holy Spirit revealed it to me and it will build your faith. So let's dive into Philippians. The first thing, and I did not learn this until I was in my 20s and I had been in church since I was born. I never knew. Well, as I told you last time, that like the book of Philippians was written by Paul. I didn't know who it was written by. I just thought, here it is. It's in the Bible. And, um, but it was written by Paul. I didn't know who Paul was. And so these are some questions that you need to stop. Who wrote it? Why did they write it? Who did they write it to? What were the circumstances that they wrote it? Maybe the church was um, flourishing. Maybe the church was under t intense persecution. Um, maybe like Acts, it's the beginning of the church and, and the establishment of the church and you reading about how the spirit was moving. And so um, you've got to know who wrote it. You've got to know who they're writing it to, when they wrote it, why they wrote it, and then um, where they wrote it. I didn't realize that most of what Paul wrote, he wrote from prison. Isn't that cool? To think, if you're we, a big audience of ours, probably 90% of our readership in Victorious Living, and especially these videos, probably 99% are people who are incarcerated. Just think about that. Right now where you are, God can use you in a way to touch people for centuries. He can reveal things to you like he did the Apostle Paul that can totally transform the atmosphere. He can use you and speak to you because God uses the, the things that the world would not choose to do his work. I want to tell you a little bit about Paul. So these, the way you learn about Paul is you go, go read in Acts. Go read in Acts. And I'm going to flip to Acts. Acts, by the way, is the acts of the church. It's the acts of the moves of God. It's, it's, it's exciting. And you'll see um, a lot about Peter. You'll see um, 
Then you'll see about Saul, Acts 8. So in your own time, you see that Philippians chapter 1 says this letter is from Paul and Timothy, slaves of Christ Jesus. Usually in the Word, it'll tell you who wrote it right there at the beginning. So I want to stop right there. I want to know who Paul is. So you can see I don't get very far in Philippians today because I've already stopped. So maybe you ask someone, hey, do you know much about Paul? But even if you ask your pastor, you still go to the Word and you confirm it. Because a lot of times, I know sometimes I might say something that I believe with all my heart, but maybe I've misinterpreted something and I try very carefully whatever I share to make sure that I, I know it to be true or it's something that's been revealed to me. But we're still all human and we can make mistakes. And sometimes even pastors can twist things. Um, people can twist it to make it fit a situation. And so always, no matter what you hear, who you hear it from, go check in the Word. If you have access to the internet um, or a concordance or a Bible dictionary, you can do some searches about Paul and, and find out some history. And so but the best place to get it is the Word of God. And you can find it right there in Acts verse chapter 8. And so maybe you don't know this, but the Bible has the different chapters, and the, I mean, the ch different books like Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. Then within those chapters, you have books. No, within the books, you have chapters. I think Timmy's call just really threw me off, but I'm gonna keep going. So you have chapters, chapter one, two, three, and then within the chapters, you have verses. Hey, some of you may know that. Some of you might be watching this for the first time and you don't know that. So. Um, somebody taught me, I'm teaching you. So Acts is the book, chapter 8, and then it's verse 1. And by the way, when this was originally translated, there were no uh, verse breakdowns. It was all like one big writing, but they divided it up for us so that we could um, find the verses and study it together, and it's a very helpful thing. So Saul, according to Acts 8, verse 1, was one of the witnesses. So Saul was, at that point, he was a leader. And we'll find some, in Philippians, Paul will tell you a little bit about his life. But Paul was like the most, the top of the top. He was a Jewish man. He was a Roman citizen. He was a Pharisee. I was just reading this morning um, in Philippians 2, it was talking about how he had such an incredible background. Um, actually, it's Philippians 3. It says, I was circumcised when I was eight days old. I'm a pure-blooded citizen of Israel and a member of the tribe of Benjamin. I'm a real Hebrew if there ever was one. I was a member of the Pharisees who demanded the strictest obedience to the Jewish law. And I was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the church. I obeyed the law without fault. I once thought all these things were valuable, but now, now that he knows Christ, I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. And so we find out that, that Paul, who was then called Saul, was this leader. He was a religious man who persecuted the Christians because he thought they were in error. He would chase them down. So in chapter 8 of Acts, we're seeing that Saul, he was a witness to Stephen being stoned to death. Stephen is another person we could study another day, but he was a mighty man of God. And Saul is there approving of Stephen's execution. And so this is who Saul was. He was a murderer. And he ended up, we find out in Acts, he came to know Christ because he was on his way to Damascus. He was on the road to Damascus. And this blinding light hit him and blinded him. And in that moment, Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And he said, who are you? Lord, who are you? Like he knew in an instant, he knew in an instant that he was you know, how am I persecuting you? He's like, I just met Jesus face to face. And he realized in that moment that all that zeal he had, 
it was misplaced. See, he really was zealous for God, but he didn't know that God has sent his son Jesus. He didn't receive it. And so he persecuted what he didn't understand. But when he came face to face with Jesus and he was blinded and his eyes became open to the truth, this man took off in a new direction. And he, all that zeal that he had against the believers now was for the kingdom of God. So this is who Paul is. Saul, was, his name was changed to Paul. And I don't have the exact, um, I should have done some research on this, but he wrote a large majority of the New Testament from prison. And um, I think I've heard before, it's like two-third, but I, I don't know for sure, so don't quote me on that. But those are things that you can study in your own time. And see, I can't give you all the information, right? You won't need to go study, but I need to go study that too. I've heard it, but I don't want to misquote it. So we know that Paul is writing. We know that Timothy is writing. So we could do the same thing. We can go see who is Timothy. Well, Timothy was a young person that had been under Paul's leadership. We know, um, if you know anything about the Bible, there's a 1 Timothy and a 2 Timothy book. Guess who those were written by? Timothy. Those were letters. Um, actually, they were written from Paul to Timothy. So see, it's important to know like who's writing it. Why are they writing it? And when you do that, you can put it all into context. That's the main thing when you're reading the Word of God is you want to have context. So let's go a little bit further down. So it's written from Paul and Timothy, and they're slaves of Christ Jesus. They describe who they are. Now, a lot of times in, in our society, we think of the word slaves as a very negative thing. Well, a slave is someone that is owned by someone, someone that, that serves someone else. And in this case, he's saying we belong to Christ. We serve Christ. We have put our faith and trust in Christ, and we are giving ourselves as slaves to him. And that's what being a believer is. It is coming under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And, and right here, I, I would stop and I would say, God, I wanna be a slave of Jesus Christ. Because I know, this is how my mind would go, because I know, God, that you are not a hard taskmaster. I know that I can trust you. I know you're gonna provide for me. I know that you're going to reveal everything I need to know. I know that you have good plans for my life. So, Lord, today, like Paul and like Timothy, I want to become a slave to you. And, um, and I thank you, God, that you've accepted me into your family. See, this is, this is how I study the Word. Again, it may not be how you do it, but this is how my mind, I just stop right there. I, I want to know who wrote it. Why did they write it? I want to know some background. And then I would stop on a word slave. Like, what does that mean? I'm a slave of Jesus Christ. We're slaves. He's saying we are committed to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. This is who we belong to. We represent him and we are not owned. We do not serve anyone else. There's a lot packed into that verse. Can you see that? So that's why it's important. You don't just like read this letter is from Paul and Timothy, slaves of Jesus Christ. I'm writing to, and you just keep going. And then it's like, wait a minute, you just... We just miss stuff. There's always something. Every word was written here for a reason. So here's why he's writing it. Verse two, I am writing to all of God's holy people in Philippi who belong to Christ Jesus, including the elders and deacons. Just last week, I was reading that again. I can't tell you how many times I've read Philippians. And I stopped because I realized a couple of things. First of all, Paul and Timothy are writing to all of God's holy people, all of them, not just one or two, all of God's holy people. Where? In Philippi. So that's the town. So at that point, you could, you could maybe keep reading because you could just keep stopping and stopping, but maybe you write down a question. Where is Philippi? What's so significant about Philippi? You can go down all sorts of trails and, uh, and study, 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 and learn, and learn, and learn. And that's what's so fun is because every time you go there, you can learn something more. 
under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. God is a teacher. His Holy Spirit is a teacher. And he wants, he says, open up your mouth and I'm going to fill it. Um, so including the elders and the deacons. So the other day I saw that it says, oh, including the elders and the deacons. So this caught my attention because he's writing to all the believers. And maybe, I don't know how this exactly played out, but maybe the elders and the deacons wouldn't have thought this applied to them. But he's saying, you know what, you guys are the leaders and everything that I'm saying not only applies to, to those who are under you, they apply to you too, the leadership. So it includes everybody, it includes everybody, that's important. And then he, you'll notice in Paul's writings, he says, may God, our Father, remember he's writing to believers, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. So right then you can think about what is grace and peace? And you can just go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And um, you know, I, I can just tell you to me what grace is. It's, it's God enabling me to do what I cannot do on my own. The grace of God has saved me. And so I would stop in my journal right there and say, God, I'm so thankful for your grace. I'm thankful that you forgive me. You enable me to have salvation, something that I could never do, uh, do for myself. I could never earn my way to, to salvation. I could never please you. It's your grace that enables me to have faith, that enables me to please you because the Bible says that my faith pleases you. So I don't know if you see how that, that works. Um, grace, he has given me a grace, his grace, to, to come on and share with you. Apart from you, like when that phone rang and I'm out of the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and I'm over here on the side, you can see my brain is like this, but under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he gives me grace. God, I'm so thankful for that grace. He gives me peace, that peace of mind, that, that inner calmness to, to face things. And so these were things that the church needed, the believers needed in Philippi, and it's what we need today. And so remember, as you're reading this, that it's not about just what uh, the believers back then needed. These are our letters to us today, and they're alive, and they're, they're um, applicable to us today. So we did not get very far, did we? <laughs> I've tried to keep these segments at about 30 minutes, and I'm seeing we're at 27 minutes. Timmy's phone call took about one of those minutes, so Skip's going to have to leave Tim's phone call in there. Or he's, none of you are going to know what I'm talking about. If, if he took it out, my husband called in the middle of this, but he was looking for his barbecue ribs in the refrigerator. Um, so anyway, if it had been a snake, I'm sure it would have bit him because it was probably right there at the front. But we got through in Philippians chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. So you could see right there. Now, was that excruciating? Hopefully not. We learned a lot, I think. We came together. We talked about some questions that we could ask ourselves, some side journeys that we could take. And I look forward, I don't know about you, but I look forward to trying to tackle some more. Uh, we, As we get going, we're going to tackle you know, bigger sections, uh, maybe even a chapter or half a chapter together. It'll be more than two verses. But you know what? If we get stuck on a verse and we're learning together, it's okay. My goal is for you to realize that we're not in a race. Okay, this is, we're not sprinting to know God. It's a journey. And reading the word, it's a journey. And if you just read two verses today, but you stopped and you did what we just did, Lord, I just thank you for Paul. This is what I wrote in my journal. I thank you for Paul. And I thank you for Timothy. I thank you that Paul from prison, um, and I wanna go, do a little research and find out a little more about Philippians, um, the town, and I encourage you to do the same, and about the circumstances when Paul wrote this. Like, when was it written? What year in A.D.? Some Bibles will actually will tell you that. That's why it's great to have study Bibles. But um, I, I, would, I would close it out with a prayer. Lord, I thank you for this letter that was written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit by Paul and Timothy. I thank you that Paul, while he was in jail, while he was incarcerated, he was thinking about believers, not just the believers in Philippi, but he was, he was 
thinking about me, future believers. That's why he wrote these letters. Thank you, Lord, that these letters are still alive. They're still active, that the word of God is speaking to me today and that there's life in the word. I thank you, Lord, that I am your slave and that you are my master and I wanna serve you, God. I thank you that this was written to all of God's holy people, including leaders. And Father, as a leader of this ministry, Victorious Living, I thank you that Philippians was written to me too. And, and God, I thank you for the grace and peace of my Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you that it applies, that grace and peace is for me and it's for those that are listening today. In Jesus' name, amen. See how easy that is? Praying to God is just talking to God. It's your heart opened up to God. And the Word of God is such a great framework to pray. And that's another discussion for another day. So I didn't mean for that to rhyme, but hey, we'll just close on that note. So I appreciate you being with me. I appreciate you, as always, sharing these with those that are maybe incarcerated with you. If you're watching this in prison or if you're in free society, I, I just thank you that maybe you can share these with your, your small group or maybe you can create a small group around these videos. Maybe you can share them with a friend or um, maybe you think about supporting our ministry. You can go to victoriouslivingmagazine.com and you can give, click that button at the top, give now. And not only will you um, be supporting our ministry, you'll be enabling us to um, send Victorious Living into prison to disciple men and women who are incarcerated, but also you're going to get access to all these wonderful resources too. And your faith is going to be built and you're going to experience the more God along with us. So thank you so much for your time. I look forward to joining you again um, at next time that we meet together for more. God bless you and have a wonderful day.